Shade, check. Mini files ready to be checked. Check, check, check. You're here, checkmate. Mini phalaenopsis. Maintenance checkup. Lots to look at, some progress to report, but mainly this is about cleaning them and giving them a good, good garlic alcohol paint job. <laughs> this is my mini mark given to me by Anonymous. Mini Mark wanted to bloom quite a bit after she started blooming on the spikes that she had remaining, extending one of the spikes, and well, I cut them off. I want Mini Mark to focus on root growth. And I get a lot of little wild birds coming in to visit Ciliano before his free flight time. <sighs> yeah, they leave traces of their presence behind. But I'm liking what I'm seeing on Mini Mark in general. I haven't been that slack with wiping down the leaves, so there's not that much to do. It's just, you know, you want to take off what the little birdies leave behind. So there we go. Mini Mark is growing a new leaf. In the back, we don't have new roots yet. This one's desiccated, I wonder. No, I'm not going to pull it out because maybe it's alive down in the pot. We got a little bit of salt accumulation happening, so piping down on the entire fertilizer regime and the reservoir is full enough. Yeah, a couple of days ago I went around for all my mini phalaenopsis and added fertilizer. All of my minis are getting 300 parts per million this year. I'm pushing them hard. I think they are improving and I believe they can take it. So the last thing that needs to be done on this one is paint the structures, especially around the base, with garlic alcohol, because I do get scale trying to enjoy my mini fowls, any fowls for that matter. Not so much the summer blooming ones, but the complex hybrids and these, and I always thought it was stem rot that was taking my fowls out until I got with a program and realized it was an actual fact scale that had settled in the crevices of the leaves. So I'm always very, very conscientious now about making sure we do a little bit of eau de garlic, just a tiny mist. So I'm always very conscientious now about my prevention routine. There we go, mini mark done. I hope you're doing well. If you're growing phalaenopsis, I hope that they are growing well for you as well. I have had difficulty in the past years to get my phalaenopsis to grow well for me. And the last ones that I'm now starting to see recover, get the hang of, are my mini fowls. Because for the longest time, I found they were the hardest to get established. Like this one here. This is my mini Aurora. She's like the, ah, oh, look at that. But it's a dead body. Ha <laughs> gotcha. She's one of the first ones that I got that is super duper fragrant. So in actual fact, she is officially 2.0 and she is recovering. She also bloomed one bloom from her first spike in approximately three years. That I just documented and I took off the spike so that she could continue to recover. And you can see, hopefully right in there, there's a teeny tiny bit of dead scale as well. I like them dead. So, dear YouTube, I'm using that word in respect of scale. Don't ding me, don't send me a warning, I'm not trying to put any harmful content on your platform, none of that. It just comes with the territory when we're dealing with plants that we use words that you and your algorithm do not like. We also have to deal with pests that we do not like to have on our orchids or any plants for that matter. So please, dear algorithm, take note that in many, many instances, it's a good thing to use that word because that means that our plants are safe. I do not need another warning from you. I know what I did wrong the first time and I shall not repeat it. So. Thank you very, very much. And speaking of algorithm, would you mind giving this video a like? Also because little one is growing a new root, which we have to be very, very conscientious of, that that doesn't desiccate. I find that mini phalaenopsis, and this is how I care for them, they need a lot more water than the complex hybrids do. They also don't grow roots as readily and as vigorously as maybe the complex hybrids do. Meanwhile, I have one large, large complex hybrid that is a reluctant root grower as well, but 
I find they need a lot more water. And for that reason, all my self-watering pots have small lecker in them when it comes to the mini fells. So at least we've got a nice one coming there. I'm liking the progress of Aurora 2.0. Here's Maxi. I don't think that she's a mini fowl per se, but I include her in this category because her counterpart is a large, large complex hybrid with the classic white blooms. This one has always been a little bit smaller in comparison. They came in the same arrangement. Maxi was staked last year in order to get roots to grow in the pot that wanted to go aerial. I'm liking the extension of the roots there. I like the trajectory. That's where I would like it to go. And I'm hoping that these will start to pick up and also start extending. If I get a little bit, let's say, wary of them not going where I want them to quick enough or they desiccate, I'm gonna take out all the lecker that is in the close vicinity down here, make a well and then guide them down to ensure that they will go where I want them to. And if that works out and this orchid wants to produce more new roots, that's fine by me. By the way, I'm going to link the video for the garlic alcohol recipe. I'm going to link that in the description. Anybody asks, I've been using this for the last two years. Finally, finally, something that even dendrobiums don't object to. So thrips, scale, mealybugs, all that horrible stuff that we don't want for our orchids. It works. We just have to stay on top of it. When it comes to treatment, because there is an infestation, it works immediately. When it comes to prevention, which I'm doing here because you can see that Maxi is scale free, I do it now every month. I used to say six to seven weeks easily, but mm -mm -mm. I think it's best. I've got a timer in my phone and I've got everybody that is up for preventative treatment on a timer. I'm not sure if that is a root nubbin wanting to pop out or if it's a body that has passed. And it is a little bit bumpy, but I think it is possibly the start of a new route, but I'll keep an eye on that. So there we go. Just a little general mist. Even while they're outside, it's nice and breezy today. That can all dry out before I put them back inside. Now, another one I'm very, very proud of, finally coming onto her own. This has taken forever. She is five years in my collection. This is a little mini I call Vega Cecilia because of her beautiful Bordeaux red wine <laughs> blooms. And well, Vega Cecilia is one of the most coveted red wines in Spain, coming from Ribera del Duero, the wine mecca of Spain. And Vega Cecilia has a beautiful vineyard, wonderful, wonderful place to visit. Looks like you're going to Mars until you see all the vines appear. And then you're just going into this huge area along the banks of the river Duero and well, enjoy wine tastings a day out or make a weekend of it of all the wines that that area has to offer another wonderful wine that comes from that area is called protos one of my favorites let's just say in the past one of my favorites not anymore simply because i stopped drinking red wine quite some time ago huh we've got one root at least going in the pot good news this one if it wants to start extending yeah, we're going to have to do something about that. But it has grown a fabulous new leaf for me. This is one of the nicest looking ones. As you can tell, the others look a little bit dinged, a little bit stressed. This one's grown beautifully. So I'm optimistic about Vega Cecilia. And if she wants to bloom in the next bloom cycle, then I'm going to let her. So we've done the painting. I don't need to mist her because I've been yapping away to you about red wine simply because of where this orchid got her name and why. <laughs> no misting necessary there, but I do want to mist the microfiber. Staying away from the center, even though we are in beautiful summery temperatures, beautiful breeze, etc. My goodness, sometimes Orchids will surprise you and then you'll think, what did I do wrong? It was warm. It was breezy. We're in the great outdoors. Why did you get stem rot? So there we go. Vega Cecilia is done. Happy to say. Now, oh, by the way, I have an update for you on my Doria Tianopsis Sogo Vivian. <laughs> yeah, that one. Oh, well, when we get to it. Okay, not a mini, but she's in the category because... 
it's a keiki. This is champion, came from the mother plant Maximilian. Champion is growing a new root, which is amazing. Always welcome sight. And then branching on the older root that is already doing well in the pot. The aerial roots that we potted up back in the day, working beautifully. No qualms. I've got absolutely no complaints about Champion here, but it's not a mini fell. The keiki itself has now been in the pot, I think two years. I shall confirm if I'm wrong. I shall correct myself on the screen, but you can see two leaves. And yet Champion came through and bloomed for the first time earlier this year. I made a little video about baby's first blooms. Wow, there's another root trying to start there. That's great. Baby's first blooms. So exciting. Didn't let it bloom long either because I want jumping on to get strong. And you can see salt build up. Even though I am upping my fertilizer because I want to push these what should be large orchids this season, I can see salt build up. So I may need to remove some of the surface lecker just to make sure that I don't burn any root tips, but I'll keep an eye on what's going there. If need be, I'm gonna put a microfiber over here just to protect that root tip because it is super duper importante for this orchid. Seeing as she's a bit slower than the next one we're gonna have a look at. Oop, there's a beautiful root tip coming out here. Hello, sneaky. I don't want you coming out, you're supposed to go in. And what I'm gonna do is take the lecker away from that root tip. There we go. He thinks that's good enough for Champion. I call this one Champion because obviously Maximilian is the mother plant and Champion is a combination of champion, which is English for, you know, you're a champ. And the Basque version of Champion is spelled with an X, but the pronunciation is CH. So I've combined the English and the Spanish into one word. That's why I called the keiki from Maximilian Champion. Okay. Here is Walter Jr. has been through a lot <laughs> and still is with us, considering that I almost yeah, put this cakey at heaven's door, let's just say, because we were experimenting with this one. And just in time, in the nick of time, we took it out of the experiment. And since then, it's like, ha, huh, goodness me, lady, what were you doing with me? So. Walter Jr. is the keiki from an orchid called Walter Sr., of course. Walter Jr. is the same age as Champion. They were harvested from the flower spike in the same year. So you can see how much more vigorous Walter Jr. is. And that is the reason why I'm trying to push Champion a little bit with fertilizer increase, etc. But there's nothing stopping Walter Jr. at all. I'm not going to repot. I was contemplating, you can see, the remnants of our experiment here with the colony, which was a disaster. But here's, oh, this root is extending. So yeah, I thought I'm gonna take her out of the pot and repot her, put the root in, but I don't think I need that. Oh, and by the way, just to let you know, as I was working with all the pots, I knew the water levels based on me moving the pots around. And also because I've just added some fertilizer last. So just another double check, you see how the level is still good from the day when I added the fertilizer. But anyway, so I was gonna think of repotting her and all that business, but nah, it's good. It's fine. It's healthy. The roots are working. I don't need to be that insistent about getting that root into the pot. But doesn't mean I'm not gonna change my mind if I need to, because if I see other roots going aerial, uh, yeah, we're gonna upgrade the pot and we're gonna get roots into the pot because now that this orchid wants to grow so well, it's gonna get every opportunity to do so. Okay, I think there was a little bit of a start of a mealy bug in there. Just in case there's some crawlers around, we shall mist. Now, I've never had issues with garlic alcohol touching roots, desiccating roots, but it's not like I'm keen on testing it. I prefer to avoid it as best as possible. That is all. So when you see me covering the roots like that, it's just to avoid the mist getting on the velamen. Just precaution. I don't need to be surprised by anything that at the end I'm thinking, duh, it's so obvious. Don't put alcohol on your roots. It has desiccating characteristics, so duh. But anyway, let me just say for the most part, I've not had a problem. What you're looking at here is the back of my Doritanopsis Sogo Vivian. Now this one did teach me something about alcohol 
and the desiccating evaporative cooling effect it has on foliage because Dum Dum here took the frustration of years and years of losing Phalaenopsis orchids to scale by dousing this one because I saw scale had come into the leaf joints and I just lost the plot. I didn't mist it. I didn't paint it. I drowned the orchid in alcohol by spraying again and again and again and I did that during the warmest time of day and the evaporative of cooling together with the fact I didn't wipe the leaves down because of the excess alcohol that was on there it just hmm cooled the cells down to such a degree they collapsed so that is what you see here that is me and this orchid taught me how not to apply garlic alcohol <laughs> and when not to apply it especially if it is hot outside now the leaves are very dusty they shall remain dusty i am not touching her because she is recovering this is important to me that she stays recovering the microfiber is there to boost the humidity to keep that one new root going down in the pot one if one is all i have to work with that one is precious <laughs> for sure so since the debacle and to my understanding she was completely sans roots she has grown the leaf back here but you can also see cell damage on the leaf back here i hope without jiggling her too much because that was in the crevice of the leaf joint when I did exaggerated application of the garlic alcohol, all right? So at least that leaf made it, it didn't die back. Then she grew another leaf. Not much variegation, but I was happy for that because I needed more green on her so that she would photosynthesize. I actually thought she may revert back after the stress, etc. That would have been fine by me as well. I love the cute little blooms. Then she came out with this one. Variegation is back, much more predominant. And we only have signs of stress because of the ridges here. You know, the little bit of wavy bits there, little spot there. But for the most part, she's looking amazing. <laughs> I know, I know. There's better specimens out there. And trust me, when she arrived in my collection, she looked a gazillion times better. <laughs> but then this season, she grew this leaf. So I'm actually looking at her and I'm thinking that one side has more variegation to it compared to the other side that is not as variegated. Again, that's fine. The more green she has, the more she can photosynthesize. Super important for this orchid. I don't believe she has any viable roots in the pot. So ahem, this microfiber is always damp to encourage some form of root growth and we managed to get one. <laughs> Having said all that, she does need her little alcohol application. She does because weak orchids and pests seem to be like a match made in heaven. It's awful we've come this far it's taken us this long and while it is the hottest time of day i'm only painting the structures <laughs> i won't even be misting <laughs> and i'm going to keep my fingers crossed that me not going on the other side of the base right here is not going to make me get angry and scale settles there so i'm being very meticulous about my application so that the paintbrush can get into as many little areas that I won't access by targeting that base. You can see how much that one root is. It's vital. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, because I doubt she has energy to grow another root. Not like she's a really enthusiastic root grower per se, but <laughs> we don't want to mess that one up and test the waters. Anyway, this is my maintenance routine. The alarm went off yesterday for the maintenance of the mini fowls and the subsequent preventative treatment. <laughs> As I said earlier, if you would like this video for me, that would be awesome. If you would keep your fingers crossed for me with my Doria Ternopsis Sogo Vivium, that would be so appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, well, your vote of confidence will also be appreciated. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.